first up what we are going to be looking over today the first topic like i said we are going to be seeing a few calculated fields today so we haven't gone through all the calculated fields there are certain calculated fields or types of calculated field functions which i had missed on purpose because i wanted to go through that only after covering our related business object and other relevant topics over there so that is the reason why i didn't cover and i told you that i'll just cover it uh, later so there are like three different ones which we're going to be seeing at the start number one it's called as lrv which is nothing but lookup related value and we are going to be looking at esi which is nothing but extract single instance next is going to be an extract multi instance <clears throat> multi instance all right i think we covered esis esis is nothing but the jargon we use for extract single instance and emi is nothing but the jargon we use for extract multi instance so these are the two different jargons which we use and lrv is nothing but lookup related value so common jargons which we use and just giving you a heads up as well because i might be using i might be calling it as lrvs but that's nothing but lookup related value and esi for extract single instance and extract multi instance so these are common jargons which i use so probably you can just make a note of that as well because these are common things which everybody uses in a real world as well all right so that's with that so first up <clears throat> we look at what is lrv which is nothing but lookup related value so i'm just going to create go to create calculated fields and the field name i'm going to give it as test rn or i will just go by the proper nomenclature i'm going to have my company or name as rn and i'm going to say the calculated field name is lrv earlier you were using it as cf for calculated field <clears throat> now as we progress what i would rather suggest is when you create a calculated field instead of saying cf for calculated field cr for a condition rule i would rather suggest that you guys use appropriate function of each and every calculated field so as we progress whenever you create a calculated field use the naming con convention which is appropriate to the calculated fields function that you have aggregate related instance should be ari ac for arithmetic calculations and then any other field for date for dt difference for dd format date whatever you want lrvs we use lrv esi for extract single instance emi for extract multi instance so i would rather suggest try to start using appropriate conventions for each and every field name and this is very important that you use only the appropriate naming convention <clears throat> all right that's number 1 and number 2 LRVs are very very widely used <clears throat> across the board because this is something that you need to get a lot and lot and lot all right and the reason why i asked you to go through that uh, related fields is you just see it next as well now what i'm going to do is i'm going to go across i'm going to build this particular new calculated field on worker business object and i'm going to build lrv as lookup related value i'm going to say worker i uh, let me put it like business site address <clears throat> all right and why i've just named it is just a simple thing i'm just going to put it something as simple okay now so what i'm trying to do over here with this particular lrv that i have over here is i have a worker business object but say my requirement happens to be from the worker business object i need to pick that particular person's work location address or pin code state information or anything related to the work address of that particular person you get the funda see i have a worker table over here or i have a say i have a <clears throat> i have the worker profile over here i'm going across to the worker profile i know this particular worker is working out of a specific 
location but for this particular location vancor i need to know which office of vancor he is working out of number 1 and i need to get say this work address is over here i need to get some specific information about just this particular work address alone it could be like a pin code or it could be some other information which is available only in the work sorry only in the location business object so from my worker business object i am jumping across to my work uh, to my location business object and pulling out an information from your location business object all right and for the folks who are in a technical background it is nothing but joining two tables say a worker table and a location table you are possibly doing an outer join and then picking out a field from your location table this is the technical part of it and the non technical folks it is like from my worker business object i am jumping on to a location business object and i need to get some specific information from my location business object which was not available in my worker data in my worker data it may not contain all the details about my location so what i do is i traverse from my worker business object on to my location business object and then pick across pick across the information that i am looking for so from here i am jumping say this is the worker business object from here let me say that i am moving across to location so i am just trying to see all the <clears throat> links between my worker and my location happens to be 42 links which are available and from that i may choose one which is appropriate for me and then pick across the field that i want from this particular location business object that is precisely what i am going to do here all right so i've gone to create calculated fields i gave the name and then i gave the type as lrbs then i went to and then i fed the value of business object as worker took me to the next page in this lookup field i usually give the field over here which is appropriate to the related business object that i want to look up so here i am using location field which is from the location business object and it is going to contain the primary location for my worker so here in the look lookup field i will give the value as location i'll give the value as location all right i'll give the value as location over here and the other thing that you need to note over here is this particular field is always always this is a single instance field in your lrvs you can use only single instance fields as your lookup fields why we will get to when we get into esis you will understand it better so my lookup fields are only and my god lookup fields uh, can only be a esi or a single instance field <clears throat> see over here i have location over here and what i am doing is this particular lookup field over here all the lookup fields that you have can only be single instance field it can only be single instance field remember when i told you about single instance field it is nothing but a collection of fields or for that particular business object i am picking a set of data which is applicable at that particular instance or to be in more explaining it in a better language in any table i am picking one row of data that is what a single instance is so 
I am picking one row of data in the other location table. From that, I am going to pick the data or the return value that I want. See here, for this particular field, the lookup field happens to be location. And this is from the worker location. And automatically, the related business object is picked up as location. That is actually coming from here. I am traversing from my worker table to one row of data in my location table. I have picked that particular row. That is what this lookup field or lookup instance does. From there, I want to have a row or I just want to have one single field value to be returned. I have one table here or people who understand Excel better. How do you do a VLOOKUP? All right. So those who are from a non-technical background, you know what is a VLOOKUP, right? What do you do in a VLOOKUP? You just try to map it over there and then find it out. That is precisely what we are doing. The same VLOOKUP concept, try to apply it over here. I have two sheets of data or two columns of data from one column to another column. I see if there is a match. If there is a match, I want to return the nth column that I have over here based on a criteria. That is precisely what we are doing over here as well. If you have done VLOOKUP in an Excel, that's what it is. For this particular location business object, I'm probably giving something like an address. I'm just giving a random field. You can pick any address you want. All right, it's up to you guys. So I'm picking an address. I could pick like primary city, primary address city, country name, whatever. I'm just picking random value. All right. Or let me put it like country, primary address, country name. All right. From if you see over here, this is from the location business object. So the lookup field was from my primary business object, which is worker and the related business object was shown as location and any return value will always be from your related business object only. It will be only from your related business object and that's it. That's all that you need to do. Nothing else over here. Rest of it, whatever we created using and create calculated fields earlier is going to remain status quo. That's it. Now I have my field over here and I can use this field in my reportings as well. I can use it in my reports, conditions, wherever I want to use. I can do that. Not a problem at all. All that is good. Next type of field that we are going to be seeing is ESIs. All right, so I'm going to pick worker location. So from worker, I'm traversing to location. I'm going to go my business object as worker. And I'm going to simply give it as ESI. So here again, instead of extract single instance, you can directly give it as ESI or LRV for lookup related values. So this is a easier way for you to use it over here instead of giving the entire values all right here again the source field that i want to have is going to be my location all right so which location i want to use i can use all of these locations over here all right and again so over here if you see all of these fields are going to be multi instance fields all right and give you a perspective as to what happens over here in an ESI is very, very simple. From I'll explain it first, you know, database terminology, and then I will come across to a non database level. See, I have worker table and say I have location table from location worker table. I want to pick one row of data, not one single field value, but I want to pick an instance or a row of data based on a criteria. It's not that I'm picking the location because Workday does not have the capability to do both of them. In a SQL, you may write select location country address from location table. We're joining it with the worker table and based on a criteria, which could be something like the latest effective data. Code. You cannot 
do it in workday in a single sql statement you have to do it in multiple seek multiple steps so the first step is going to be like a join where what you are going to do is from your worker table you are going to go across to your location table and you are going to put in a criteria probably which is going to say effective date is your latest effective date that's it that is what you are going to be doing over there so the effective date is going to be your latest effective date all right your date is going to be your effective date which is your latest effective date so i'm going to pick one row of data from your location table based on a criteria that i'm going to give so here i'm picking the multi instance field as location see here returns all locations for your workers primary and additional positions all right so or i can even choose all active locations in the location but i would rather choose this one over here where i will say all the locations for my workers primary and additional position and it includes active and inactive locations as well clear on this clear on what we exactly we are trying to fetch over here and why i am choosing the source field as location or let me choose locations itself because this is going to give only the active ones and not the inactive ones so it's going to make our life much more easier all right the next thing see uh from my worker table i'm going across and picking the latest row of data in my location that's what i'm ideally doing here i'm not picking a field value but instead i'm picking a row of data a row of mm -hmm. data from my worker to my location the same concept of related fields also applies over here we are picking a single row of data based on a criteria that i am going to give over here all right and again this is a condition field if i want to create a condition i can give a condition over here i can create a new calculated field which is going to be more a boolean in nature all right so let's go ahead and do it over here and then i will go to an already existing one here for the criteria to explain what i'm trying to do over here from the worker i am traversing to the location table my uh, my objective is to pick only the primary location how we are going to pick remote locations and also normal locations that's what we are going to do over here let's pick the location data so for that i am going to create a new calculated field so let me say that i am going to pick rn tf for true or false i am going to say primary location and my business object is going to be location and my function is going to be true or false and go, guys were asking me why do you use a true or false in order to create a condition in an in an esi we use it over here and here very simply put i will say location type let's say location type if i go to the related business object of this type of the location and i am going to say operator is going to be in and i am going to simply choose let's say local office or office let me say only office address i'm just going to pick only a location type as office since we do not have the remote over here option over here i'm just going to say only the office relevant address and i will feed this as a criteria in my esi so when it goes across from worker to my location table it will pick only the location type as office it is not going to pick any other data it's just like what you might do in we look up with the filter criteria in a we look up with the filter criteria this is appropriately what we are doing here
now let's proceed so i've created the field over here which is going to say primary location and again one important thing that you need to do over here is in terms of sorting since this is going to be a single instance field it is important that i give the sort field because it is going to pick only one row of data it is going to pick only one row of data which is going to be the top most row based on the sorting criteria it is not going to pick multiple rows it is going to pick only the top most row of data it is going to pick only the top most data here i am just giving you earlier i explained the effective date concept here again in my location table i am going to use the current effective date of my location table and i'm going to say descending i'm going to say descending so that it is going to pick the latest data which is currently effective and one thing i just want you to understand is where you are coming is precise but global is a business object which you can use anywhere anywhere all right and the other day also i think when we created a constant field constant field is only going to be available in a global business object global is a business object which has no defined scope and it can be used anywhere across the world we can use it in any business object it does not have any kind of a scope at all it's not going to have a fixed scope it can be used anywhere all right let me go quickly on create this one quickly going on creating this yeah i already have my created your creator just putting this as current effective date all right and post sorting post sorting i can also have say based on this particular sorting if for the same effective date i may have multiple rows of data as well so i can use first occurrence last occurrence specific occurrence i can have more amount of filtering done over here as well so is the concept of esi clear to everybody what we are doing over here in esi we are only picking one row of data based on a criteria how to actually differentiate between your home address versus your work address versus your remote address that's based on your condition field that you have over here for this you may have to give the appropriate worker location type or something as remote and that's going to give you the location address of that worker's remote address all right let's get to emis esi is going to return one row of data one row of data of my locations business object over here it's going to return one row of data of my location business object whereas your lrv is going to return a field value in that row of data so from this esi okay. i can use this esi as a source field for possibly my lrv 
if that makes sense to you got it let me go across to no i can't go across to location see the thing that i will show you that i haven't gone through this uh, now but what would have ideally happened now we have created an esi field from my worker to my location i made a note of it earlier if you'd seen the number of linkages between worker business object and your location was earlier 42 42 linkages you had between your worker and your uh, location business object that was before creating this esi now the same count should look as 43 should look as 43 let's go ahead and see and including our field that we have created over here should also show up over here see here now it's 43 including the one that i created right now rn esi this is also a linkage which i've created from my location sorry from my worker business object to my location so all of these in a nutshell are either esis or emis so if you see here as multi instance it's more of a emis and i have my own field over here as well which i can possibly use for another lrv based on the because i have given a specific criteria over here which is going to be only some certain locations and for that row of data is already available and i can use it anywhere that i want or in a little bit more simpler language i have created a database view over here that view is going to return only one row of data from this view i can say this view name dot field name these are nothing but linkages between one business object to another business object they could either be an esi or an emi and there are certain ones which are work day delivered plus when whatever you are going to create is also going to be available over here all right now let's go across to extract multi instance so i'm going to create another calc field and i'm picking the same old business object because it is easy for you guys to understand it all right so you can try position location cost center whatever comes to your mind and i've already showed you yesterday from a page how can you go to the reporting field names and values over there so if you want to you can go to your worker profile you can go to any other details and pick relevant fields pick out the business object explore whatever you want benefits payroll information absence whatever business object you want to traverse from whichever other business object that you want to do go ahead and do it there is no hard and fast rule as to what you guys want to do over here all right let's go across to worker location and i'm going to give again the same old worker business object and here i'm going to give extract multi instance all right you've already seen what esi is and from the look and feel of it see over here there are certain fields over here and there are also certain fields over here let me just pull it out and then show it to you so that it's going to make a lot more sense to you side by side i've shown both these what is the difference that you see between esi which is on the left side versus an emi which is on the right side what is the difference rows of data precise precise you here also you can have only one i'm afraid you cannot have multiple ones here also i'm going to give only locations you can have only one field all of this are radio buttons all right these are not uh, these are not uh, what is that these are not uh, check boxes so these are radio buttons and you can choose only one all right so this can return multiple values and again if if you see over here like a view that you may possibly create in sql same way and again if i'm going to give an intersection union the same concept that you have in your mathematics set concept here i'm giving subset in my location i'm just giving a subset over here 
based on a condition. So if I'm going to choose it, say, as a union, then I can have source field one, source field two. Both of them are going to be in the same business object, ideally. And what is it that I want to do? I can create a subset. I can create an intersection. I can create an exception also based on whatever criteria that I want to have effectively in a SQL. When you put all your filter criteria and your joins and everything, this is exactly what I'm doing here. Clear guys. So I can have one source field here as location. Another I can have position based on what I want to have. But ideally, I would prefer to have only location and location here. I don't want to confuse you guys right now. All right. I don't want to confuse you guys. So I'm just using only location so that because when you look through the entire picture, it will be a little bit difficult for you. That's why I'm just choosing a simpler one over here. Let me go for subset, but you can explore definitely what an union intersection and an exception is going to be the same mathematic concept that you have your Venn diagrams and everything. What is a union? What is an intersection? What is a subset and everything? It is exactly the same only based on whatever criteria that you give over here. And again, once I create an EMI from this EMI, because this from this EMI, I may have multiple rows of data. I can create an ESI and that is like from this EMI, I'm going to more narrow this down to a single row of data and then I can use it in my location or sorry in my LRV to pick an appropriate field. This is effectively how it works in a real world. In a real world, your business may come out with a requirement in this particular page. I have this particular field, say from a benefits related page, I have something like a benefits enrollment relevant data, which is more in the benefits business object. From there, they will ask you to build a report which you want it in your worker business object as your primary business object. So you have to build a EMI first. If there are multiple instances, build an EMI from that EMI, pick the latest effective data row for your ESI. From that ESI, you have to pick a LRV. So your EMI will act as a source field for your ESI. Your ESI field will act as a source field for your LRV. That is how the chain of commands work over here. Hope I'm not confusing you all. Clear on this what exactly you do. The same concept that you have. And for non-technical folks, just try to grasp this. You have two sheets of data on your Excel. I want to find a VLOOKUP kind of a structure between these two. I put a VLOOKUP and then I pick one row of data from my location sheet and then a worker sheet. And then I go across to that particular field, that row which I have got based on effective criteria that I have, based on a criteria that I have. And then I pick the value over here. They're using an LRV. See here, I'm picking a subset, which is a very, very, very simple example. In a real world, I may put an union or an intersection, and then I may have so much of data. So first, I'm creating a union or a subset or an intersection where I'm going to have 10 or 5 rows of data. From those 10 or 5 rows of data, I will put it across in an ESI to filter down in one row. And that one row, you, I will use an LRV to get the appropriate field information that I want. All right, let me go across to my ESI. Now I have created this ah, crap. All right, this is an EMI I've created. It is on the business object called as worker. Now I go across to my ESI, I click on edit. Instead of this source field, can I not give my EMI? And again, I will show this again to you as well. Now you see 43 over here. I'll just click on this randomly, but you will have effectively 44 rows of data. See here, you have 44 rows of data. Even though it shows 43 because it's not refreshed, but I will have both my ESI and EMI over here. 
This one is a multi instance. This is a single instance because this one I created as an ESI. This one I created as a multi instance. Clear on this, guys? What is ESI? What is EMI? What is LRV? Because even in your interviews, even though it might be a little bit of an inter intermediate concept, but you can, if you can understand this and appreciate this, nothing like it. Because this is a little bit foundation plus one level. But this is very important even in your interviews. If people are going to ask you what is a reporting field, what is an LRV, ESI, EMI, you should be able to explain it to them. This is very, very important that you understand the concept. So that's why I'm telling you, you guys need to work on some ESIs, EMIs, and LRVs today. So please, as an activity, create at least two ESIs, EMIs, and LRVs. Use your LRVs in your reports. You cannot use your ESIs or EMIs in your report, but you can definitely use your LRVs. So try to pick anything that you want. Pick any random field that you want. You can also choose any field that is already available. Try to clone it and then play around with it.